He's never had a heart attack. Anymore. Yeah, he's had two heart attacks. He's had two heart attacks. Okay. That's why I decided to bring him. I no, didn't no. know. What to... You did the right thing. Absolutely. He didn't want to come. So he's got both both hands are spasming, and and he's hyperventilating a little bit. And and when did the spasming in your hands, this carpal pedal spasm? When did this? It was scared me so much. I thought I was. Try to be still for me, okay? So we can get this picture. I thought I was having this heart attack. Okay, I'm going to take a. Just, well, actually, I'll let you answer questions in a second. She's got to get the CKG. I'm trying, I'm trying. So you probably have some numbness in your feet, too. Yes. My toes are numb. The toes are numb, and you're probably numb around your mouth, too. Yes. Okay. All right. So this that's kind of classic for hyperventilation. So ne nevertheless... Um, prior heart attacks, if he had chest pain, chest pain can really kick off um, hyperventilation because you're afraid, and especially if you've had heart attacks in the past. And uh, but but the hyperventilation is something that uh, is not so worrisome. It's That's really it's, it's, it's but we, we want to make sure we want to make sure that it's not anything else going on that scared him and kicked him off. And that's what we need need to check into. I, I've actually seen patients who are having like supraventricular tachycardia, pulmonary emboli and all that who who start hyperventilating and it'd be very easy to just write it off. Oh, you're just anxious and frightened and hyperventilating and and then you miss the real diagnosis. And and so basically though, uh, you'll find electrolyte abnormalities. You'll find the CO2 drops well, way down. His, his pH will be real high and his calcium will drop down too. How long have you been hyperventilating like this? This just started. I mean, like I said, I got up this morning. I was okay till I started getting this numbness in my mouth and okay. in my hands. I was to okay because I took my wife this morning. Oh, I was took okay. You to work. Okay. And then when I got back to the house, I laid down for a minute. I got up. I felt pretty decent. I wasn't throwing up in fact than I was yesterday. Okay. So then I got up and I went, just went to try to clean up, straighten up the house a little bit. Then this thing, you know, I just stopped simply doubling my mouth and then it hit my hands. And I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's why I called my brother to come bring me up here. Okay, all right, good enough. Well, this isn't so worrisome. It's, I thought it's, I was having a, first I thought I was having a, Having a stroke. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... That's what scared me. I thought I was having a stroke. My head right. was locking up on me like this, yep. my mouth. Yeah. I came in a couple of months ago where I've been in twice for the same thing, just violent throwing up and whatnot. Oh, you know what? Let me ask you. Let me ask you another question here. I'm going to turn off the video for a second. There's a blood gas 7.61 and P2 to 27, so that's kind of consistent with hyperventilation. So we've had a conversation here. It almost sounds like we're dealing also with the past history and of, of hyper hyperemesis cannabinoid syndrome too. So now I'm just talking to the patient's wife. He's sound asleep, snoring. He got he got some IV haldol. And um, sounds like he, we stopped the marijuana two weeks ago, but he's still having the persistent vomiting and nausea. But he's also complaining of chest pain. He's got some stents. He's been smoking weed ever since he's 15, and he's 40, 44 now. Yeah. How many episodes of this intermittent episodes of vomiting has he had? Uh, this is his third episode. A third episode. All right. Because when I saw him back in January, um, it was we, we, we really focused on the chest pain. And at that time, the history of marijuana was downplayed a, a little bit, I think. So, yeah, he's going to have to stop the marijuana. Yeah, It'll, it may be hard, but the the good point here is that the teaching point is again that he's been on Phenergan and Zofran at home, and it hasn't helped. But how much how much uh, how dog did you give him? Five. Five. Okay, and you just gave it five push with with with. with but 25 of Benadryl. And he didn't have any acesthesia or any, any side effects from it. That's a risk, but okay. That was our trusty nurse who's not on the video.